We continue now at the top of Daf Kuf Dalad Amud Aleph in Maseches Bab Metzia. This is Bab Metzia Daf 104a. And the previous summit, the Mishnah said that if a person is a sharecropper in an irrigated field and the river dries up, he's not allowed to deduct from that which he said he was going to provide to the owner of the field. And the Gemara asks, well, what exactly is the case? If the case is that the major river of the area dries up, that's a regional disaster, and then he should be able to deduct. And so the Gemara says what we're talking about is that the channels that go to that specific field, that's what dried up, and in that case he has no claim because the owner can say, you should have just brought the water in pails, meaning to say just because the channels that go from the major river to this field dried up, that's not enough of a reason for you to deduct. And the Gemara continues, Amar of Papa of Papa says, Hani Tardi Masnisa Kamaisa, the first two Mishnayis, meaning the first two Mishnayis of this parak, Mashkachas la bein bechachranusa bein mekablanusa. So the halachas apply whether we're talking about a tenant farmer or whether we're talking about a sharecropper. Mikan va'elach, but from this point forward, the Isa bechablanusa, those halachas that apply by sharecropper, lesa bechachranusa, will not apply by the tenant farmer. With the Isa bechachranusa, and those halachas that apply by the tenant farmer, lesa bechablanusa, so they will not apply by the sharecropper. And Rashi explains, Mashkachas la bein bechakirus bein bekablonus. These halachas apply both by the tenant farmer and the sharecropper, meaning to say, Bekulon yesh lomar, liktsor, yiktsor, lak, or yak, or meaning to say, let's say, for example, the halacha that we had, that if the local custom is to cut the produce, then you have to cut the produce. If the local custom is to uproot the produce, you have to uproot the produce. That's going to apply both by the case of the tenant farmer and the sharecropper. Techol mashi yesh lo liton bekablonus, any claim that you have, meaning such a claim that you have by Sharecroppers, for example, Yeshlo Liton Bechakiros, that same kind of that same kind of claim can apply by a tenant farmer. The Gabe Yavashamay, and the same thing is true, let's say the spring dries up. Imamar, if he says, Chakorli Sada Beshlochinzu, if he says that you should be a tenant farmer for me in this particular irrigated field, Kihechi de Vachakiros, Ki Yavashamay, and just like by the case of a tenant farmer, if that spring dries up, Menachelo, he's able to deduct. Again, by a tenant farmer, he's taking upon himself to give a specific amount of core per year so he can deduct. If it dries up, hachanami bekavlanus. The same would be true by a sharecropper who is going to give a certain percentage of the produce. He also can deduct him kibla bishlish Let's say again, he accepted that he's going to be a sharecropper for a third or a half. Hakolafi mashanef said he can go according to what the loss was in the case where it dried up. And Rashi continues, mikan va'elach from this point forward. Kalacha sefer shana b'mekoma. Rashi says each one I will explain in its place. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, If the farmer says to the owner, lease to me this irrigated field, so then if the source of water dries up, he is allowed to deduct. And the Gemara says, Now why is he allowed to deduct? Why can he give the owner less? Why can't the owner say to the farmer, I was just telling you the name of the field. It's referred to as Beis HaShlochen, but it didn't mean that it's necessarily irrigated at this point in time. Didn't we learn a bride? So if a person says to his friend, Beis Kor Afra Ani Mocher Lach, I'm selling you a field the size of a Beis Kor, even though it's only a Lesach, which is a half a Kor, that's going to be considered a good transaction. Shalom Machar Lo El because he's selling him the name, the name of that field was called Beis Kor. Vahud de Miskari Beis Kor, that's if the field was referred to as the field of a Beis Kor. And similarly, the Brisa says, Karma Ani Mocher Lach, if a person says, I'm selling you this vineyard, Afa Pisha Bo Gafanim, even though it has no vine, Higio, that's considered a transaction. Shalom Machar Lo El because he's selling him by name, Vahud Miskri Karma. of course, that's only true if this particular field was called Karma. And similarly, Pardis Ani Mocher Lach, if he says, I'm selling you the orchard. Afa Bishain Bo Rimonim, even though there are no pomegranates, Higio, that's considered to be a good transaction. Shalom Machar Lo El because he's selling it to him by name, Vahud de Miskri Pardesa, that's assuming that this particular orchard is called Pardesa. And so the Gemara says, Alma, we see from this Bray, so Amar Lay, that he can say to him, Shma Bialma Amrilach, that I was just telling you the name. So Hachanami here also where he says an irrigated field, name Malay, he should say to him, Shma Bialma Amrilach, I was just telling you its name. It doesn't mean that right now there is a source of water. And the Gemara answers, Amar Shmuel, Shmuel says, Lokash, it's not difficult. Hada Amar le machkir lechocher. In one case, we're talking where the owner says it, says it to the person who's leasing the field. And Hadi Amar le chocher le machkir. In the other case, we're talking where the person leasing the field is the one talking to the owner. And the idea over here is as follows. Amar le machkir lechocher. If it's the owner that says it to the person leasing the field. So Shma Bialma, the owner is just using the name of the field. Shma Bialma Amar le. He's just telling him the name of the field. It doesn't mean to say that it has to 
to have this quality. But Amar Lechocher Lemachker, but if it's the person leasing the field who's talking to the owner, so then Kepeda, then he really is Machbid. He's saying that he wants it to have this quality. In this case, he wants it to be an irrigated field. And the Gemara continues with another answer. Avin Amar Avina says, Idi V'idi, in both the case of the Mishnah and the Braisa, the Amar Lechocher Lechocher, the cases where the owner is talking to the person leasing the field, and Midiko Amar Zeh, but from the fact that in the Mishnah, the term used is Zeh, this particular irrigated field, Mechlal Dekoi Begavo Askinan, so it sounds like they're both standing in the field. So Beis Hashlochen Lamalei Lameimar. So why does he say the words Beis Hashlochen, this irrigated field? To Kamar Lei Beis Hashlochen Kedekai Mahashta means to say he's selling him the irrigated field as it is now, meaning with this stipulation that it is in fact irrigated. And if it turns out that the water source dries up, so then the person who's leasing the field is allowed to deduct from the amount that he was going to provide. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, HaMekabel Sada Mechavero, if somebody receives a field from his friend, again taking it in an arrangement as a sharecropper, Vahovira, but then he doesn't actually work the field, Shaman so then we have to evaluate Kamaru Uyalasos, how much would it have produced had he worked the field properly, Vinosin Lo, and that's what he has to give to him, Shakach Kosev Lo, because that's what he writes to him when he has this contract. He says, I'm over Velo Avid, if I don't end up actually working the field, Ashalin Bemetva, then I'm going to pay you in the very best produce. And Rashi explains, Hovira means Shaloh Kharsha, Velo Zara, he didn't plow the field, he didn't plant the field like he was supposed to. So Shamanosa, we have to evaluate Kagon Bekablonus. Now Rashi notes over here, we're talking specifically about a sharecropper, Shakiba Lamechsa Vilashlish Vilarevia. And he's going to be paying half or a third or a quarter of the produce to the owner. Avil Bechachronus, but let's say by a tenant farmer who has a specific amount of core that he gives to the owner each year. So there, Lo Shaychaha. So there, you wouldn't, this Mishnah would not be relevant by that case. Demai Shaman Ika. What evaluation would we be doing? Chachirus Oitin Lo. He'd have to give him the amount that he said he would give him. So this Mishnah only applies to a situation of a sharecropper who's taking a certain percentage and giving a percentage to the owner. And the idea the Mishnah said was, or the reason ra- rather was, because it's written into the contract. Im over, as Senobora, meaning if I'm going to allow this plot of land to lay, fa- to lay fallow, velo avid, I'm not going to work it. Velo esaba paula haruyal, I'm not going to do the proper work. So he says he's going to pay, and that's why we do that evaluation, and he has to pay. And the Gemara says, Rabbi Meir hayodoresh loshen hedyot. Rabbi Meir would darshan the regular language that was written into contracts. Rashi here explains, Doresh loshen hedyot shehir gilu hedyotos licht Sometimes the regular people, they would write things into contracts that was not part of the Takona, it was not part of the institution of the Chachamim. But Rabbi Meir would try to determine what that language means, and he would follow the Psach Halacha, the ruling, would follow that language that was uh, that simple language that was written into the contract. And the Gemara continues, where do we see this within Rabbi Meir? Rabbi Meir essentially is going to be the same as our Mishnah, the Tanya, as we learned in a Brisa. Rabbi Meir, Omer, Rabbi Meir says, Im over velo avid ashalim b'meitva. Again, if I let the land lay fallow and I don't work it, I'm going to pay the very best. That's exactly what our Mishnah said. That was a line in the contract that Rabbi Meir would enforce. And the Gemara continues along the same lines. Rabbi Yehuda had Doresh Lashon Hadyot. Rabbi Yehuda also, he would darshan that simple language that was put into the contract, meaning he would enforce it. The Tanya, as we learned in a Bryce, Rabbi Yehuda, Omer Rabbi Yehuda says, Adam Mevi Karban Asher Al Ishto. A person has to bring a carbon, even of a wealthy person, on behalf of his wife. Vechain Kol Karban Vekarban Shi Chayevis. And also any carbon that the wife is Chayev, that person, the husband, has to bring that on her behalf. Shakach Kosevla, because that's what he writes for in the contract. Achrayus to Islach Aloy. Min Kodamastana, the idea is that he's taking responsibility for her obligations. And Rashi explains, Adam Mevi Karbon Asher Alishto, a person brings the carbon of a wealthy person on behalf of his wife. What that refers to is Shehu Chayev Bekarbon Leidos of its Arata. Let's say the carbon that she brings when she gives birth or when she has Saras, he's obligated. Vim Hu Asher, and therefore let's say he's wealthy, and there are different levels of carbonos for different levels of wealth of the person. So if he's wealthy, Ein Yochel Lomar, he can't say, he Ein Loklum, that she's not wealthy, she has nothing. Vitiftar Bekarbonani, and then she could just be exempt by bringing the carbon of a poor person, he's not able to do that. And that's true for kola karbonus she chayevis. That's true for all of the karbonus that she's obligated. Shalom benedir unadava, meaning if it wasn't some kind of a donation carbon, kagon carbon zivasa, for example, let's say she has the tomas ziva and she brings the carbon, viyasham vechatas shala, carbon asham or carbon chatas that she has to bring. Now Rashir has a slightly different gear so than we have in the Gemar, Hachi Garcina Lavataras Kohanim. Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says, lefikach therefore, impatra eno chayev bahen, 
if she's exempt, she's not chay, if she can he koseves lo, because this is what she writes to him, achron di'isa li aloch, min kodam astana, this responsibility that I have upon you. And Rashi explains what it all means. Vachi perusha, here's what it means. Lafikach, therefore, im girsha, let's say he divorces her, that's what it means to say, im patra, if he divorces her, vinasan la ksubas, and he gives her her ksuba, viadayin karbanose alel, and she still has these obligations of certain karbanos to bring, eno chayiv bohen, he's not chayiv in them. Shekach koseves lo, beso chashover shekoseves lo. This is what she writes to him in the receipt that she writes to him. After she receives her ksuba payment, she gives him a receipt to confirm that she received what she was supposed to receive. Shekoseves lo al kabolas ksuba, so she writes this for him on the reception of her ksuba, his kabalti ksubasi, I've received my ksuba ve'achroin di isli aloch min kodamos to nove chol achrayis, shehoyo li olecha milifnei hayom hazeh, all these responsibilities were taken care of, it is paid off, and Rashi just notes, Voloshan Asfarim, the language that we find in the actual Gemars by our text, Eni Yodei Lafarsha Korai, I don't know how to explain it properly, but the point in any case is, is that that which is written into the contract, again, he enforced that according to what was written in there, even though it was just written as a Loshon Hediot. And the Gemara continues along the same lines, Hillel Hazakin, Hillel the Elder, the same thing, Hayadoresh Loshon Hediot, he also would enforce in contracts the simple language, Detani, as we learned in Abraisa, Anshe Alexandria, the men of Alexandria, Alexandria, how you they would be Makadish, their wives, that refers to the betrothal stage, the Kiddushin stage. Now, when it was time to get married, to enter into the Chuppah, other people would come, and they would grab them, they would take the wives, they would grab, them, they would grab them from the husbands. And the Chachamim wanted to say that the children born from this were Mamzerim, because they already, these women already accepted Kiddushin, and then they had a child with another man. Amar lehen hil hazokin, so Hillel the elder said to them, meaning he said to the Chachamim, hey, viu li ksuba simchem, bring me the ksuba document of your mothers, hey, viu lo, they brought it to him, hey, viu lo ksuba simchem, they brought the ksuba, umotza shakasa behen, and he found that it was written in them, lecheshetikonsi lechupa, when you enter into the, the chupa, havali into when you enter under the canopy, that's when you're going to be to me as a wife, meaning to say it was conditioned, the kedushin was conditioned on the fact that there would be chupa, but that there would be Nisuin. And so therefore, if the wives were taken at the time of the Nisuin and they never went into Nisuin, so the Kedushin is not effective, and therefore he was able to ensure that the children were not Mamzerim, Veloasu Beneim Mamzerim, they did not make their children into Mamzerim. And Rashi explains, Ksubas Imon Shakosven Lehen Biyomerus, and this was the Ksuba that was written on the day of the betrothal, Lecheshiti Konsi Lechupa, and it said in there that when you enter Chupa, Vikidushen Amanaskein, Rashi understands the Kedushin was on that condition. The Kedushin wouldn't be chal until there was entry into the chuppah of Arechot Fakodim Lakach, and then the women were taken before that. And so again, this is an example of Hil Hazakin darshaning the simple language in the contract. And the Gemara continues along the same lines. Rabbi Yoshua ben Karcha, Hayadoresh Lashon Hedyot, Rabbi Yoshua ben Karcha also would darshan the simple language in the contract. The Tanya, as we learned in Abrais, Rabbi Yoshua ben Karcha Omer, Rabbi Yoshua ben Karcha says, Hamalve es Chaver, if somebody lends to his friend, and so he's taking collateral from the bar, or lo yim shechenu, lo yim mashchenenu yosu mechov, we shouldn't take a collateral more than the value of the actual debt that is owed, shekach kosevlo, because that's what he writes to him, tashlumta de is loch alai kol kavel dichi, We'll see Rashi in a moment. Rashi says, Lo yim shechanenu al yedei shliach bezin b'mashkun shu yesra al chovo. So he can't take through a shliach bezin. Through an agent of bezin, he's going to be taking collateral. He can't take a collateral that's worth more than the debt. Shekachu kosev lo tashlum da de'islach alai kol kavel dichi. Because he writes, when he writes into the contract, he writes, this is the payment that I owe you. And Rashi explains the line to me as follows. In meishiv lo esa avot. We're talking here where the lender takes a collateral, but then he actually gives the collateral back to the borrower. And at some point, point in time, the borrower is going to have to give it back. So in Meshav Lo Esa Avot Lizman Maruba, let's say he returns to him the collateral for a long time. Shaman Es Hamashkon. So what we do is we have to evaluate what is this collateral worth. The Kosev Lo Zeb Bishtar, and he writes the following in the Shtar. He says, You loch kol tashlumen olay li para mimeni demei mashkon ze. It's going to be to you all of the payment, meaning I, the borrower, have an obligation to pay to you whatever the value of this mashkon is. I owe you the value of this mashkon. That's what it means to say what they're writing into the contract. Now the problem is, if the mashkun is going to be more than the debt, so essentially, what's based on what's written on the contract, the borrower is now going to owe the lender 
more than the actual loan that was taken, more than the actual debt, that would be problematic. So in other words, what the Gemara is saying is, based on the line that's written in the contract with regards to the mashkon, and he's essentially, the borrower is obligating himself in the value of the mashkon, it cannot be that the mashkon is worth more than the debt. That's the idea of Rabbi Yoshua ben Karcha darshaning the Lashon Hedyot. But the Gemara says, time with the cost of Lehachi. One second. The reason, it seems that the reason why he's allowed to take back the mashkon is because this is written into the contract. Ha'ilo kos of lehachi lo kanya. It sounds like there would be no kenyan if this wouldn't be written in there. Rashi says, time at the cost of lehachi kolomar lo malei lemichtav What the Gemara means to say is, why does this even need to be written? We'll take a look at the Gemara for a moment before we see the continuation of Rashi. V'yomar ab yochan and din ab yochan and say, moshkin o v'heshev lo amashkin. Let's say the lender takes collateral and returns the collateral to the borrower. V'meis and then the borrower dies. Shom to me'al gabe bonav. He's allowed to take it from the children. Apparently you don't need to write anything into any contract. As Rashi here continues, Vamar of Yochanan, then of Yochanan say, Moshkin over Heshev lo asa'avot. Let's say he takes a Mashkin, he returns it, Umei Salov, and the borrower dies, Shom to Hamalva, Me'al Bonav, the lender's allowed to take it from the children. Velo Havik Hashar, Metaltali de Yasmi, the Lomishtavdi Labalchov. It's not like other movable objects of orphans, which there's no lien on them and the creditor can't take it. The Kevan de Moshkin, because once he already took it the first time, he took that collateral, Kanye, so he actually acquires it, Kidi de Laguvain, it's like his, and he's able to collect it. The point is, therefore, why does anything need to be written about taking the mashkon? He essentially has made a kinyan on the mashkon, and he's allowed to take it, even in a situation where the borrower dies. He's allowed to take it from the orphans, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Kovdalid Amid Beis.